And unfortunately, you cannot use your digital multimeter to check capacitors. You have to have a capacitor meter. You have to have a special meter just for capacitors. Which is really a shame because a capacitor meter can cost you 60, 70, 80 bucks. I paid 150 for this one, but there, you can get them cheaper than that. Um, and yet, it only checks one thing, capacitors. And your meter, which only costs 40 bucks, or can only cost 40 bucks, checks everything else, which is really bizarre. But using the capacitor meters is really pretty simple. Uh, all you do is set the capacitor meter for whatever range you want, just like with the resistors. You know, for instance, you know, there's two microfarads, 20 microfarads, 200 microfarads, and so on. And all you have to do is, is jam the capacitor into the meter. For instance, um, it has these clips too, or you can just put it in here like this, making sure that you get the polarity right. I turn on the meter, meter says that this is 110 microfarads. It's supposed to be 100 microfarads, it's 110. This capacitor is good. When capacitors fail, the number of microfarads is less. In other words, it's supposed to be, well, for instance, there's a common problem in a Hytron power supply, there's a 220 microfarad capacitor fails all the time. Just, it just fails. And I'll point that out to you later on. And you pull that out and you put it on the meter and it says it's only 27 microfarads and it's supposed to be 220 or it's 100 microfarads or something. If it shows you even 10% less than what it should be, it's definitely bad or it's on its way out, one or the other. Um, because here's a new 100 microfarad, you can see it says 109, 110, it's 10% over. Usually, almost all electrolytic capacitors, when they're new, are about 10% over what they should be. That's good, that's good, because remember, when capacitors fail, they lose their ability, they lose their capacitance. So when I see one that's even at all lower than whatever's printed on the cap, I, I gotta say, well, this thing's on its way out. Capacitors are usually not a catastrophic failure. Capacitors usually fail a little at a time. They start to get worse and worse and worse. And in a monitor, you see increasing amounts of distortion on the screen. In a power supply, for instance, in this one power supply, the Hytron style that I was mentioning before, um, it does the weirdest thing. You turn on the game and it doesn't come on right away. And then five minutes later, bing, it fires up by itself. And the first time I ever got this call, I went, you're wrong. I mean, the call was, yeah, the machine takes five minutes to warm up. Well, you know there ain't nothing in a game that takes five minutes to warm up normally. I'm going, no, you must be wrong. Really, man? No, really? Well, okay, I'll be right out there. And I go out there at the liquor store, and they got it in place. Plug it in. They see it. You wait, you wait, you wait. Okay, it's like an Arabone liquor store. You wait, you wait. Okay, fine. So, you know, have a Coke, have a Coke, have a Coke. Okay, fine, have a Coke. You know, sure enough, doesn't come on. I'm going, well, let me just fix it. No, no, you wait, you wait, you wait, you wait, you see. Okay. Yeah, five minutes later, boing, the thing fires right up. Bad capacitor. Capacitors are funny like that. Sometimes when they're cold, they won't work, but as they warm up, the problems go away. You see this on monitors a lot. When you first plug it in, it looks like crap. And then after it heats up, it's the sides straighten out a little bit, and it gets bright, and it looks okay. Those are typical capacitor failures. Uh, as we'll discuss later on in a monitor, uh, very often when you change, if you have bad caps, you want to change them all at once. And I'll give you a source for these capacitor kits where you can replace them all for a pretty reasonable price. In fact, by virtue of coming to the class, you get a 15% discount. So I'll, I'll tell you about that uh, a little later on. Now, I want to show you one thing about checking capacitors with a digital multimeter. And the only reason I'm showing you this is to tell you not to do it. Um, what will happen is you'll go back and you'll be talking to some kind of a hot shot and you'll say, ah, oh, Randy's full of shit. You can check capacitors with your meter watch. Here's how you do it. Well, this is what they're talking about. And I just want to show you this to tell you not to do it. Here's what I mean. They'll put the meter on some kind of an ohm scale. They'll put it like on... Uh, They'll put the meter on like the um, 2K scale or something like that, and depending on the size of the capacitor, and put their meter leads across the cap, positive to positive, negative to negative, and watch the meter charge up. Oops, that's a little faster. Let me go to a different range. They'll so watch the capacitor charge up on the meter. One, two. 3.1, 3.3, 3 .4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 4 point, 4 point, 4 point 6, 
minutes, you know, five. You can see that it's charging up. And I mean, the meter's changing. You can see it's, it's increasing in numbers. Well, obviously, this capacitor is taking a charge. That's what they say. Well, it's taking a charge. It's good. Well, in, in a way, they are correct. Yes, it is definitely taking a charge. But unless you have another one of the same capacitor and a stopwatch so that you can tell how long it takes it to charge up, you don't know if it's the correct value. In other words, a 100 microfarad capacitor will charge up just like a 1,000 microfarad will. It just charges faster. So you need to be able to tell exactly how many microfarads it is. And so I strongly suggest that if you're going to do a lot of monitor repair, you get a capacitor meter. Now, you don't have to have one. In fact, I've only had one for the past few years, really. And I've repaired lots of monitors before I had a capacitor meter. But the only other way to check it out is by substitution. That is, if you have a shitload of capacitors in your shop and you think that capacitor is bad, pull it out, try sticking a new cap in. If the problem goes away, obviously that cap was bad. And that's the way I've been doing it for years, but it's a real hassle unless you have a lot of capacitors. Because you gotta, you say, oh, well, I think that one's bad, you go drive over to the store, you pick up a capacitor, you come back and you stick it in and shit, that's not it, you go get another one, and, and it's, uh, it's a hassle. For 80 bucks or whatever it's going to cost you for a capacitor meter, if you're doing a lot of monitor repair, especially because that's where we have a lot of cap failures, it's not a bad idea to have a capacitor meter. Uh, quite frankly, though, when I have bad capacitors in a monitor, and again, we're going to discuss this in great detail on Thursday, um, I usually end up changing just about all of them anyway, on the theory that when one's going bad, they're all probably going bad because they're all the same age. We might as well get rid of them all. And so, I, I, you know, if you're a small operator, I definitely don't suggest you run out and buy a capacitor meter, as long as you have a source of capacitors. But capacitors, you, you do need to get a lot of them. We'll be talking about parts sources later on in your book. There's a whole list of places where you can get parts for a pretty reasonable price, and we'll talk more about those as we go through that. Okay, but that's, um, that's capacitors. Uh, and again, they, they fail a lot, especially in monitors. We have a lot of cap failures in monitors.